Uh, I just want to welcome everyone here today. Uh, what a beautiful evening as we are going to be looking at another part of the seven feasts of Israel. And I'm going to look at the next two feasts. I'm going to be looking at the Feast of Pentecost and I'm going to be looking at the Feast of Blowing of the Trumpets. And that is what I'm going to be looking at today. Our reference is going to be Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1 to 44. And I'm going to get right into it. I'm just going to get right into it. I just want to welcome everyone here today who is coming out to learn the word, to study the word. And I know that as we study the word, the Holy Spirit brings revelation to our spirits. And the Holy Spirit is the one who is going to be teaching us. I am I'm only a vessel, but I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to come and teach us. Uh, let us go into it. We are looking at the fourth feast, which is Pentecost. And we can see that in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 to 22. 15 to 22. The purpose of this festival was to give thanksgiving to God for the harvest and to dedicate one's life anew to God. We are looking at the children of Israel, and we are looking at the feast and the feasts that we are given, the festivals that they had to follow in that time. And I know we are looking at the Old Testament and we are looking at the children of Israel, but I really want you to relate this to you and to us right now, because when we look at the word of God, actually, you will find that everything is relatable in our time. And as we are studying these feasts, I would like to ask the Holy Spirit to give us an, an extra eye, to give us a new spiritual insight into this feast because you know what this feast still are representing and they are still standing in our time so when we see this uh, feast of Pentecost we can see that the festival of harvest and which we can see in Exodus chapter 23 verse 16 is also sometimes called the feast of the weeks that's why we are calling it the feast of the weeks or the feast of the Pentecost and it can also be the first fruit of the wheat harvest the first fruit of the wheat harvest, which we can see in Exodus chapter 34 and verse 22. The festival is also a prophetic symbol of the great harvest of souls that took place when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples in the upper room when we see in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. This same festival is a symbol of the New Testament when we look at Acts and we see the harvest when the apostles were in the upper room after Christ had told them to wait in the upper room and we see when they were baptized by the Holy Spirit by the tongues of fire and they got out and we saw an harvest coming in and it's also a symbol of that harvest that even came in in the New Testament. It was a joyful occasion celebrating the end of a harvest season and dedicating one's life anew to God. So during this feast, it was such a joy to see that people's lives were dedicated anew. Let us look at some of the historical observation of this feast. The people were to give a wave offering of fast fruits to the Lord using two fresh loaves of bread. The people were instructed to give the first fruits to the Lord and they had to symbolize and use that by giving two fresh loaves of bread. And in this also we can see in this particular offering also the living bread, the bread with the yeast. The bread with the yeast had to be brought. The living bread had to be brought and it had to actually be fresh. And we can see that in Leviticus chapter 2 verse 1 and we can see it also in chapter 7 Leviticus verse 13. And I just want to say this, I, I might not say all the scriptures because it's a lot. It's a lot of scriptures. Please forgive me when I don't say all the scriptures because it's a lot. At least you can remember our reference scripture is Leviticus chapter 23 verse 1 to 44. When you need more scriptures, we have those as reference. I'm going to try my level best to give you some, but I might not give you all the scriptures. The people were to approach God for an atonement, as seeking God's reconciliation, acceptance through the burnt offering. And we can see that in verse 18, that people came to God for atonement, seeking God's reconciliation and acceptance through the burnt offering when this specific feast was done. We can see that it was used for that. So we take note that they were to sacrifice seven male lambs, one was a young bull, two rams, and all must not have a defect. They were instructed not 
to, to be able to sacrifice seven male lambs, one young bull and two rams, and all must not have a defect. And that was the instruction. To remember that the number seven, when we look at this number whereby they had to sacrifice seven lambs, we can see that the number, of, number seven stands or symbolizes a lot of things. We can see that symbolizes complica completion. It also symbolizes fulfillment. And we know, as so many times it has been told, that symbolizes perfection. So this same number that we saw in the Old Testament that was instructed for the lambs to be sacrificed also stands in our time, which stands for fulfillment. It stands for completion. It still stands for for perfection. This was a symbol of Christ. We can see in the New Testament that this, in the New Testament, it was a symbol of the Christ, of the perfect and sin sinless sacrifice of Christ that we see in the New Testament that was laid down for our sins as the children of God. The people had to approach God through the sacrifice of the sin offering and another sacrifice for the fellowship and peace offering. And we can see that in verses 19, that the people had to approach God through the sacrifice of the sin offering and another sacrifice for the fellowship and the peace offering. The people were to have the priest take the animal sacrifices and wave them before the Lord as a wave offering together with the bread of the first fruit. And these were the instructions that were given. Not that these were holy offerings and they were belonging to only the priest. These were holy offerings that were only belonging to the priest. The people were to declare a secret assemble on that day. They were to take a day of rest, gather together to worship when this feast was done. And we can see that in verse 21, that the people actually had to take off that day and they had to call it a day of rest so that they could gather together and take off this day to worship God. The people were to make this a permanent lasting law for all generations. In verse 21, we can see that it was required for them to make it a permanent lasting law uh, a covenant that had to go on for generations. The parents had to teach it to their children. The children had to teach it to the next generation and it had to go on for the next generations. The people were to help and to protect the poor when this festival was being done. It was asked of them to take care of the poor when this festival was done. And we can see how, when they reaped the harvest, how did they take care of the poor? When they reaped the harvest, they were to leave enough food for the poor to enter the fields and gather food for survival. And we can see in verse 22, when they gathered food, it was asked of them that when food is gathered, when they are harvesting the food, they must leave it so that the poor who cannot, who don't have the food can actually go and gather this food and survive. They were asked not to take out all the food when they are harvesting. They were supposed to leave food for the poor. I mean, that is so, 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 so amazing. Uh, it's so amazing that it was instructed of them to do that because we see even in our times, so many people lacking even a meal or food. But during this festival, people were asked to leave some of their harvest in their fields so that the poor would actually find it and have some food to eat. Uh, the prophetic application of this feast, we can, we can see here, remember the first the festival of the first fruit symbolized the resurrection of Christ. We can see here that the festival of the first fruit symbolized the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the festival of the harvest symbolizes the events of the day of Pentecost and that we can see in Acts chapter 2, as I said in the beginning, chapter 2, verse 1. These two festivals were celebrated 50 days apart, as we can see in verse 16. They were celebrated 50 days apart as it was instructed. In God's sovereignty, centuries before Christ ever came, God appointed these festivals to paint the prophetic picture of salvation to men. It was appointed 
that these festivals would actually paint the prophetic picture of salvation for us in the New Testament when Christ came. It was even there painted for the coming of Christ and the events that would follow when Christ came that we can see even in these festivals. What strong evidence for the sovereignty and the truthness of the Holy Scripture. We can see that the scriptures there were confirming what we see in the New Testament of the coming of Christ and of the dying of the cross of Christ. I mean the Lamb of God, Christ, without any sin, dying for us. This we can see is a symbol painting what was coming in the New Testament in the coming of Christ. The festival of harvest or Pentecost symbolized the great harvest of souls of people giving their life to God on the great day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit uh, came upon the men. I think this I've talked about. We can see that when the apostles in the upper room came out, they came out filled with the Holy Spirit and we saw the harvest of over 3,000 souls given in just that moment when the apostles or the disciples reached out after the upper room. In the looking at the prophetic picture of salvation, this is what we have seen this far. When we look at the prophetic picture of salvation, this is what we have seen this far. The Passover symbolized God's salvation, the deliverance, the redemption from the world by God. This Passover we can see even here symbolizing God's salvation and we can see it symbolizing the deliverance and the redemption work that was done through Christ through the work of the cross, through Christ giving his own life, through the work of Christ on this earth, it symbolized that work that was done by Christ through God. The festival of unleavened bread symbolized the need and urgency of the believer to be freed from the world and freed from the enslavement of sin and death. So now when we look at these different festivals, and these festivals I believe have been touched by Pastor Leslie, and we can see there was the Passover, there was the unleavened bread, and we can see there was also the festival of the first fruit. And I believe that Pastor Les has touched them. And when we see all these festivals, we can see them pointing us back to Christ, pointing us to the New Testament, pointing us to the work that was actually painting the work that was going to be done, or the work that we all know that has been done by Christ. As the believer marches to the promised land, he is to be filled with God's spirit and bear a strong testimony, seeking a great harvest of souls. When we see that during this specific festival, it was the time of harvest, it is also the time that we as believers march strongly testify about the goodness of God and about Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to fill us so that we can actually bring in a great harvest of souls in our time. And let's look at the next uh, feast, which is the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets, which we can see in verse 23 to 25. The first four feasts, if you can remember the first four feasts that we have looked at, which is the Passover, the unleavened bread, the first fruit, and then we have just looked at the Pentecost. Just to summarize again, we have just, I've just summarized the Pentecost. Now we are looking at the fifth uh, feast, which is the blowing of trumpets. Now, when we look at the blowing of the trumpets, which we see in verse 23 to 25, uh, we can see here, as it was summarized again, that these first four feasts uh, picture events of the past. We can see that the first four feasts are the pictures of the events of the fast and i just want to say it again the passover the unleavened bread the first fruit and the pentecost the feast of the pentecost are feasts that we see events of the past we can see these as feasts of the event of the past when the children of israel were doing them we are living between the feast of pentecost and the feast of the trumpets we in our time right now we are living between the feast of pentecost and we are living between the feast of pentecost and the feast of trumpets there is a three month gap between the two feasts so we can see that there's a three months gap in the two feasts which is the feast of pentecost and the feast of the trumpets historical observation of this feast 
The Israelites had two silver trumpets that were used to call the people together and to signal directions as they journeyed to the promised land. These trumpets were silver and they were used actually in the time when the children of Israel were moving to the promised land and they were used to signal the children of Israel. And I know I'm going to bring it back to our time because I love when we relate this into our time. The trumpeters were apparently stationed at regular intervals to pass the signal through the entire camp. They were there to signal to the children of Israel every time maybe they stopped during the camp when they were camping and these trumpeters were supposed to signal to the children of Israel when anything had to be communicated, maybe a movement had to be done and they were stationed in that place to always keep the children of Israel informed on what is next because the children of Israel actually used to be ready, their eyes, their ears, sorry, their ears used to be alert, wanting all the time. When they hear the trumpeters uh, blowing the trumpet, they used to know that it is time for they are giving us an instruction. And it's so important even in our time to be so, so attentive to the signal of the trumpet. Remember, there were two to four million Israelites camped around the tabernacle. We can see that in Numbers chapter 10, verse 1 to verse 2. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Make two silver trumpets for yourself. You shall make them of a hammered work. You shall use them for calling the assemble and for directing the movement of the camps. God gave the instruction to Moses that there must be two silver trumpets that are done. He did not even just say trumpets. They, they had to do them specifically according to the directions of God. And according to the directions of God, they had to be silver and they had to be done with hammered work. But the Lord says to Moses, you shall use them for calling the assemble and for directing the movement of the camp. And this, this was the work of the trumpets. They were used to call the assemble and also to direct the movement of the camp. And the children of Israel were so aware of this and Moses knew that these trumpets have to be used for the direction as the Lord had instructed them to do. The feast of the trumpets took place on the first day of the seventh month. This is called Rush. The beginning of uh, the Jewish New Year, we can see that it was done at the beginning of the Jewish New Year. All the information we are given here is that they were to gather together for a memorial. They had to gather together and remember the feast of the trumpets that were born as the children of Israel. Let's look at the prophetic application of this feast. It was for the nation of Israel. And when we look for the nation of Israel, God established the use of trumpets to communicate with the entire nation. Now we are talking about 4 million. We are talking about 4 million people only listening out for two trumpets. I mean, <laughs> just imagine if it's in our time. And look at 4 million people listening. I mean, the word to listen, to be attentive, to hear the blowing of the trumpets. And these were done for instruction, for directions. They had to attentively wait. They had to attentively listen. You could not miss the blowing of the trumpet. Otherwise, you would be left behind because the Lord gave it as a point of direction and the point of instruction. And the children of Israel could not miss it. And look at our time when we prophetically related to our time, which I'm going to do further. And as we are waiting also for the blowing of the trumpet for us and for the coming of Christ, for the children of God, the coming of Christ. It's going to start with the blowing of the trumpet. It would seem that this memorial would be re would remind the nation that God would call them together and would fulfill all his covenants with his chosen people. Every time they remembered this uh, feast, specific feast, it reminded them about how God fulfilled uh, the, his covenant, how he fulfilled his word. It was a reminder to the children of Israel every time this feast was remembered. It was a reminder to the children of Israel that our God is a covenant-keeping God. It just reminded them maybe they were at that time, every time they did it, it just reminded them that God is a covenant keeping God to his chosen children. This is a prophesied in the scriptures. We can see that it's also prophesied in scriptures and we can see in Joel chapter 2 verse 1, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm 
in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. The day of the Lord is coming, and it is at hand. Joel chapter 2 verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a secret assemble. And you can see again there, Joel is talking about the same trumpet. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of these days, of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Verse 24, verse, uh, chapter 24, verse 31. And he will ascend his angels with a great sound of the trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to another. And we can see that this is what we are waiting for. So we must be in anticipation. We must be ready for the trumpet that is going to be blown. And we can see that evidently in the Old Testament and evidently in the New Testament in Matthew. The nation of Israel is a scattered people. And this memorial speaks of a time when God will gather his people again. We can see that this same feast is a reminder for the children of Israel that God will gather the children of Israel or his chosen children again together. How, what does this feast mean for us as believers today? For the believers of today, what do we get? How can we apply or how can we get this feast to symbolize to us as the children of God of our time? The application for us today is that one day there will be a sound of a trumpet that will gather all believers unto the Lord one day which no one knows the time no one knows the day just like when we look at the children of Israel when they were going to be called or a feast or they were going to blow the trumpet no child of, of Israel was prepared they could just hear the, the the trumpet blowing and they had to march they had to move from their camp they had to get what they had and had to actually just move on they could not come permanently because they were always waiting for the trumpet to be blown, for direction to where to go. Even us in our time, we must be ready as the children of God because soon and one day, you don't know and I don't know, but the Bible says a sound of the trumpet will gather all believers unto the Lord, unto our Lord Jesus Christ. So we must not make this earth our permanent home. This is not our permanent home. We have a permanent home. We are here temporarily and we must must live daily knowing that any time the trumpet might be blown, any time the trumpet is going to be blown, it can be today, it can be tomorrow, it can be next week, no one knows, I don't know, you don't know, no one knows, but we must live a life that is worthy for our Lord Jesus Christ, because any time the trumpet is going to be blown, and when the trumpet is blown, we are going to be gathered as believers unto our Lord, and we are going to be gathered together we and the things of this world just like the children of israel when they were camping when the trumpet was blown they couldn't give excuses they couldn't say uh, i have built my camp i am comfortable here i uh, this is how i feel they couldn't they had to move immediately when the trumpet was blown we as children of god must be ready we must not attach ourselves to the things of this world because when the trumpet is blown this is not our permanent home we have our permanent home let us live daily worthy and looking unto our lord who is coming back for us and uh, we can see also here we refer to this event as the rapture this event as we know is referred to as the rapture when the trumpet is blown and the children of god are lifted up and gathered together to meet our lord jesus christ it is called the rapture paul described this describes it for us in the New Testament, and we can see that in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The dead in Christ will rise first. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised 
incorruptible and we shall be changed we shall put on the incorruptible uh, garments to meet our lord and it should be exciting yes it should be exciting i wait for that day i unspect that day i live daily unspecting for the day that i meet my lord and we must be unspecting we must be excited we must be looking up to that day that our lord is going to call us out of this temporary home because this is our temporary home even this body is just a body a temporary vessel carrying us when we are called when the trumpet is blown we are going to be given incorruptible uh, garments that we are going to wear to meet our lord uh, jesus christ we are waiting for the sound of the trumpet to call us out of this world we are waiting for this call for this sound of the trumpet to call us out of this world because this as i said before is a temporary home it's a temporary home and we are going to meet our lord when the trumpet is blown as we work and wait we are to be involved in the harvest as we work as we wait for the coming of christ and for the blowing of this trumpet we are to work for our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to be involved in the harvest. We are in our callings, in our giftings, in the way God has called us. We are to be involved in the, in the harvest, in the bringing of the souls, just like we can see that the coming of Christ is near. We are to be involved in whichever way that the Lord has given you capacity or the Holy Spirit has showed you, be involved in the harvest of this of the souls because let me tell you something that is what we are going to take before the lord we are going to take the souls that we have touched we can touch souls differently different people differently but that is what we are going to take before the lord and we ought right now to be concerned about the harvest around us and the souls that are getting destroyed that are dying around us and it's so important as we are unspecting and waiting on the blowing of the harvest that oh, sorry on the blowing of the trumpet that we get involved we work we get involved don't sit down don't just sit and wait for this trumpet to be blown be involved be involved in the harvest be involved in bringing in the souls because that is what we are going to take before our lord jesus christ jesus christ is coming jesus christ is coming jesus christ is coming and he is coming soon we don't know the day the time but we see the signs of his coming and jesus christ is coming soon let's be faithful to serve him now until he comes let us be faithful to serve him now until jesus christ comes now when we read leviticus chapter 23 verse 26 to i'm going to read it all uh leviticus chapter 23 uh, verse 26 to, 30, to 32, 26. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Also the tenth day of this seventh month shall be the day of the atonement. It shall be a holy conversion for you. You can, you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And you shall do no work on the same day for it is the day of the atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For any person who is not afflicted in the soul and on that same day shall be cut off from his people. And any person who does any work on that same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. I mean, this was a strict uh, instruction that was given uh, to the children of, of Israel by the Lord. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation in all your dwellings. It shall be to you a Sabbath of Solomon rest, and you shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month of the evening. From evening to evening, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. We can see the directions that the instructions that God gave to the children of Israel. And we can see that these feasts, according to God, they were important. And the children of Israel passed on these feasts from generation to generation. And we can see through this feast the painting of the picture of Christ. We can see the painting of the picture of the coming of Christ. We can see in Joel, we can see in so many other scriptures, and we can see the painting of the coming of Christ. I mean, how amazing is this? That even they 
as we see Leviticus, Christ is being talked about. We can see Christ is being revealed even in Leviticus. So even in Leviticus, our Christ is still being revealed. And we can see the painting of the picture of Christ who actually was to come in the New Testament. But as I conclude today, I just want to say we are in such an exciting time. We are in such an exciting time. If, if we look at the whole Bible, because sometimes we like to pull parts of the New Testament and we separate from the Old Testament, I think it's so amazing that you can look at the Old Testament, you can look at the book of Leviticus, and you can still see Christ being revealed. The same Christ being revealed in the New Testament is the Christ being painted in the Old Testament. And what I want to say to us is that as we are waiting, as we are unspecting, as we are waiting on the coming of Christ, on the blowing of the trumpets, let us keep doing the work of the harvest. Let us get involved. Do something. Don't just sit. Get involved in the work of the harvest for the souls. Get involved. Do something according to the guidance and the leading of the Holy Spirit. All of us are called to do different things in this harvest, but contribute, work, do something. Don't sit and wait for this trumpet to be blown. Work, involve yourself, get up and work, get up and, and do something to see that the souls are coming in and the harvest, as the Bible says, that the harvest is ripe. Because we, in our time, we are called as laborers to bring in this harvest as we are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The price has been paid for us. The price has been paid by Christ. We no longer have to do all A, B, C, D, feast sacrifices. The work has been paid. The price has been paid by Christ. And all I and you have to do is to receive that finished work of Christ, to fully receive it and walk in it and be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you, Lord. We bless you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, mighty God, as we look at how much you have painted and showed us the picture of the coming Christ, the Christ that was died for us, the Christ that has, has gone and died for our sins. And today, as we receive and we walk in the freedom of our forgiveness, as we walk in the forgiving power of the blood of Christ, mighty God, as we go back and see what was painted in Leviticus, mighty Lord, we are so grateful as we come to remember the finished work of Christ, as we come to celebrate the finished work of Christ, mighty God, and as we wait on the blowing of the trumpet, as we wait for our Lord who comes, who is coming to get us, who is coming and as the trumpet is being blown to take us home, we ask you, Lord, that you will give us that spirit. You will help us to be active. You will help us to bring in the harvest for the time is soon for you are coming back soon we ask you lord and we pray in the name of our lord jesus christ give us the zeal of your holy spirit help us to be zealous help us to be able not to sleep as we are waiting for the trumpet that is going to be blown help us to be zealous and help us not to be left behind when the trumpet is blown thank you holy spirit keep us on fire keep us under the same zeal and help us to join in in the harvest of souls for your coming is soon thank you lord in the name of our lord jesus christ amen let us work let us involve ourselves in this harvest because christ is coming very soon let us not be found sleeping let us not be found slumbering let us not be found tired I just pray that the Lord will give you a zeal, a new zeal, a new excitement that you will get up and that you will bring in the harvest because the harvest is ripe. Have a good evening. Thank you for studying. I believe you are here. You are studying. You are sacrificing the time. And I pray that God will reward you. Have a beautiful evening.